Hi, and welcome to another episode of Dealing TV Q&A. I'm Mike, and I'm here with George. How you doing? And we're here to take your questions and answer them. Uh, if you point your web browser to www.dealingtv.com, you'll find a little web form that you can fill out and uh, submit your own question to us. Which and we'll it might just right appear in a future episode. Absolutely. So today we're going to talk about uh, some more wireless stuff. Uh, we do a lot of wireless stuff here at D-Link and a little bit of uh, media player stuff. There you go. Okay, so let's uh, jump right in. Uh, Dan from Union, New Jersey asks, he says he has a D-Link Express Ether Network DI604 and wants to know if he can make it wireless. Now the DI604 was one of our best-selling wired routers um, you know, back, back in the day. Mm -hmm. um, there's a new iteration of it, the EBR1310. Um, but you can't specifically make those products <laughs> right. wireless because they are wired products, but you can add a product. Right. There's a couple of options you can do here. You can either replace your wired router, which has been a, you know, a solid product, but there are you know, newer, more wonderful things out there, like, for instance, the BR655, which has all of the wired router features, the stateful inspection firewall, as well as it adds 802.11 draft in wireless, plus all of the ports on the back are wired gigabit now, so they're even faster if you're doing transferring files back and forth to say a storage device or between computers. Right. So that's one option is go to a whole new, basically just replace it with a combo wired and wireless router. Right. The 604 was a was a, our top of the line wired router at the time, right. but that's been a, a couple of years now, so routing has advanced a lot since you know the 604 was actually released. And especially things like the firewall functionality. QoS. Yeah, I mean, yeah. QoS capabilities. Um, I'm not sure if it supported dynamic DNS initially. I'm sure it does now in the later updates. Right. But you know, there's some of those sort of things that evolved as you went along. Another option would be to add an access point, which basically adds just the wireless portion to your existing router. And so it consumes one of your wired ports by plugging in a wired Ethernet into the back of the access point. Right. It consumes one of the ports. So if you have you know, four devices connected to your router, already and you want to make it wireless, then you need to also buy a switch. Or at that point, you may want to think seriously about just going with a wireless yeah, router. If you're going to buy a <laughs> switch and an access point, you can probably get a brand new router, a wireless router for that cost. And you get the benefits of the you know, newer firewall functionality and the higher speed uh, LAN and WAN ports. It's 11N. And it's 11N, so better range and reach, all that good, wonderful stuff. And Absolutely. you get three antennas. Yeah, you Whee! get three, and they're wired. <coughs> And little blue LEDs, they blink a lot. Yes. So, so, so that that would be our solution was would be to either add an access point to your existing 604 or to go with something completely new like the DIR 655. Right. So for the access points, there's a whole range of them that D-Link sells. Go to the website dlink.com and under products you'll find wireless, and then from there there's a whole family of access points, both uh, single band the 2.4 gigahertz, which is or the B and G, or dual band, which gives you the ABG, which is 2.4 and 5 gigahertz. And so you've got a lot of choices of what to do. Um, a lot of these also are business class products. So if you, some of them are rated for outdoor, they cost yeah. more, but you can mount them on the side of your house and you know, have the your own little chassis. Going, yeah. <laughs> so there's a lot of different options there. Um, they do have a web management utility. So you can go and do all sorts of control and sniffing and things like that. So they're powerful little products. So take a look and see. There's a range of prices and features depending on what you're trying to do. Right. But um, that's one of your options. You can either add an access point or just replace your router with a wireless router. Yep. But um, once, you, once you do, then you've got wireless throughout your home. Good to go. All right. Okay. So moving along, uh, James from Rice Lake, Wisconsin, uh, he says, what products would we recommend to hook up his computer uh, wirelessly to his TiVo or the USB port on his Sharp LCD TV? because he wants to stream mu videos, music, and pictures to his TV. Right. There's really two parts of the question here. First of all, the TiVo or the USB on the Sharp port, as we mentioned in a previous episode, USB requires drivers. And so yeah. on your PC or your Mac, a lot of times it seems like just by magic it supports whatever you plug in. Right. But that's because the operating systems have a huge library of potential drivers, and Already they go installed. online to... Or it'll do that search right. thing, you know, where it goes out on the Internet and finds it for you. Right. It's kind and of magical that way. So for other, other products, like, say, a TiVo or a TV, they probably don't have that same library. And so in the case of TiVo, they have on their website, they list a couple of different uh, wireless uh, adapters you can plug in and you can buy and plug into it, because those are the ones they support. They have you know, a very limited amount of set that's kind of locked down. Right. On the Sharp TV, you're definitely going to have to go to 
to sharpen and find out what they support. We're not as familiar with the right. TV there's, with USB ports. There's a lot of different models out there. Um, they keep on adding new models all the time. So you know, contact Sharp and find out what they support. Now, if but the the important thing is yes. on the TiVo, <laughs> that there you go. is out only. So you're not going to be able to stream something from your PC onto the TiVo. You can only stream from the TiVo onto your PC using like the TiVo to go functionality right. or something like that. And so it sounds like from the second part of the question, you want to stream music, video, and pictures to your TV. That what you're right. really looking for is a media player. There you go. What you're looking for is something like the DSM 510 or or a 520 or something like that that um, is is the other direction. It it you know sucks from your PC on, right. and then puts the stuff onto your TV or your stereo system because there's server software that's either running on your PC or there's a UPnP AV server in like the storage device like our DNS-323. Right. Or you can play through like Windows Media Player, things right. like that. And there's also some online content, um, <clears throat> whether that's like your internet radio station, things like that. So and I'm thinking rather than invest in, in a USB dongle for his TiVo, which isn't going to give him what he wants, he really should invest in a media player. Right. And it does have built-in wireless, so you can use wired or wireless. Right. And there's a 510 and the 520 we talked about in some other episodes. Also on the website, there's a whole host of information on each of the products it shows the types of the formats they play um, you know gives you a few screenshots here and there so um, take a look and see what what you're really interested in we think that that's really what will solve your real problem right is you know, and so it's key to, re <laughs> key to remember uh, if you do a search on the D-Link website for DSM for D-Link streaming media you'll come up with 300 series and 500 series products the 300 series being standard definition the 500 series products being uh, HD resolution. Right. So since you have uh, an LCD TV, you're probably looking high def. So. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> so you want something in the 500 range. Right. So uh, that would be my solution for for taking care go. of that. And good luck, James. All okay. right. So uh, let's see. Uh, that that takes care. Of, oh no, no, no. Moving right we along got, to Stefan. We got one more question from <laughs> Stefan in Los Angeles. Uh, Stefan in Los Angeles, California, as he says, he has a 20 megabit per second cable connection. And when he connects his DIR-635 to it, the speed drops down. Right. Well, well first of all, congratulations. Your cable connection rocks. Yeah. But uh, <laughs> that said, what we suspect is happening is a DIR-635's WAN port can be either automatic 10100 megabit or it can be configured to 10 or 100. Right. Now, if you've had the 635 with a previous cable modem that didn't support this whizzy fast cable speed, you may have had to set it manually to 10 megabit because some of the modems didn't auto detect very well. Right. And if that's the case, then the WAN connection is what's limiting you. So go into, you'll see the screenshot yeah, come we up. We have a screenshot on the screen that shows if you go uh, Under, follow the, the right, one, two, three, yeah, you'll, you'll right. find it. Under advanced and then advanced network, there's a there WAN speed selection. And set that either to auto or to uh, 100 megabit. And this will take the bottleneck out of there. So now that your, your WAN port on your router will easily keep up with your cable modem speed and wow enjoy that speed that's fun yeah so <laughs> I think he has says he has a usenet server on there so uh good luck on that and uh now that will be our last question there you go. For the so day. if you <laughs> have other questions thank you for watching but please go to dealing tv which you probably already are if you're watching this yeah. and add a question bring it in and you may just pop up on a future episode we'd be happy to answer it for you so that's going to take care of it for today and uh, we'll see you next time thank you thank you Bye.